This meeting is being recorded. There we go. Okay, so welcome everyone. I'll continue to let people in over the next, you know, few minutes that they're coming in. Um, but I wanted to get started and just make, it's a general meeting, so I'm going to make a couple of announcements before we get started with Andrew, um, which is, of course, the most important part of the meeting. But I just wanted to say hello and welcome. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pam Comfort, and I'm the president of the Pastel Society of the West Coast. And I wanted to just mention a few things that we have coming up um, on our calendar. So we're in June, and hopefully you all know that our um, Pastels USA 99 Voices um, uh, competition closes for entries on the 19th of June. A couple of things were printed with different dates, but it's it closes on the 19th. So be sure to get your entries in by then. And then by the end of the month, we'll have announcements about um, who's been ad, uh, accepted into the show. So we're excited about that. On July 9th, we have our We Talk Art series where um, our wonderful board member, Bonnie Griffith, interviews artists. Um, and this coming one on July 9th is going to be Scott Christensen. So that ought to be really great and informative. So make sure you mark your calendars for that. And then we have our next 10 and 10 challenge coming up in July also. Starts on the 16th and goes till the 25th. And that's always fun. Um, you know, you can go to our website and sign up there to participate. And every time we have a challenge, anyone who's managed to submit a painting every day for the 10 days gets placed into a drawing for a $100 certificate and we give out three of those. So that's a lot of fun. Um, and I wanted to mention, if you follow us on Facebook, you may have seen the announcement about our scholarship winners. Our Your Society puts out a scholarship every year for high school seniors or college students that are pursuing art um, as a major and a career. And this year we had 35 applicants from 18 states and one from El Salvador. And it was a really wonderful mix of high school seniors and continuing college students, um, uh, just really, really high caliber portfolios. <laughs> Excuse me. And so the winners were um, Natalie Hayes, who's from New York, and Tenley Douglas, who's from North Carolina. And there's gonna be more information coming out about them in um, some future publications. So watch for that. And excuse me. <clears throat> if you know someone who could benefit from the scholarship, then watch for um, next year. We open it up in January and then um, applications are due on April 15th. Much what I have for announcements, and then we'll just, unless anyone has any questions about anything that I've just mentioned, well, we'll move ahead with um, Andrew. And what I'm going to do is ask everyone once we get started to mute your um, your microphone. But Andrew has said that as he's going along with his demonstration, if you have a question. Just go ahead, unmute, ask, identify yourself, ask the question, and then you know, remute afterward. And we'll just kind of handle it that way. You can also type something in the chat, and I'll be monitoring that um, uh, in case there's something you know that that you want me to ask at some point. And what else? I'm going to pin Andrew so that we see his screen. I think it, I'm going to spotlight that it does it for everyone. So hopefully everyone can see his screen now, his easel where he's going to be painting and his hand waving. Okay, I'm going to um, 
take it away, Andrew. He's a, an award-winning painter. He's been published <laughs> all over the place. Yes. And, he's, um, and he teaches workshops and he's very accomplished and he's just a really nice guy to chat with. So I know you're gonna enjoy this morning. <laughs> take it away, Andrew. All right, well, hello everyone. Thanks for having me today. Uh, you know, it's funny, I'm, <laughs> I can be really chatty, but I'm not a chatty person. Like if you meet me, I'm pretty introvert. I think a lot of artists are, right? We're kind of introverts. and uh, But when we have a passion, we kind of talk about it, right? So lucky enough, I got you guys to at least 12.30, so that's fantastic. Uh, I'm going to do a little street scene for you guys. Uh, I can show you guys a few pastel paintings. I've got two kicking around. Uh, I actually have been working on a one for the 99. You sure? 99. <laughs> so I got one on the go for that. Should be ready in time. So, all right. And you just feel free to banter and, you know, if you guys chat, I can, I can walk and talk at the same time. Not a problem. All right. So I'm using UI dark. I also like the pastel card uh, is quite good too. Those are my two favorites. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's funny with the UI dark. I think that there's one black. I like the black one. This is like a super, super dark charcoal. Uh, I think the black is a premium one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm still trying to figure that one out. <laughs> anyway, one. Do you, know, you know what grit you are? Uh, this is, oh, I think it's 400, a three, three to 400, I think. Three, is it 320 or 400? Uh, around the, yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 320. Well. But it, you know it's not. So, uh, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna get going here. Now I'm a bit of a kind of a wild wild man here. So let's get going. And I like doing strong on a painting first, color wise, right? Because I like the color showing through and everything. And I don't sketch first. And the reason is uh, I like a bit of freedom. And I find uh, sketching a little bit uh, restrictive for me. So I like, I like to move things around if I need to. Pastels, you know, you can layer quite a bit, so not an issue. And I'm gonna Andrew, Kim is wondering what brands of pastels you're using. Oh my god, I got a mix. I got a mixed bag. I got everything. I got Blue Earth, Terry Lovick, Jack Richardson, Great American Art Spectrum. Uh, these these ones I just got from the uh, uh, Diane Townsend. Those are quite nice too. So I got, I got a like fourth Stenelier, Schmikas. I, I, I don't really stick to one brand to be truthful. Sometimes I make noises, so I hum. <laughs> Better than my singing. Okay. And a lot of times I'll... Uh, I can work flat and straight up. This is obviously straight up. So I'm kind of starting at the top, working my way down a little bit here, but. Uh... Okay. <coughs> uh, for a while. Anyway, I'm not 
avoid it. I think that's one of the hardest things about if you're beginners, some of you guys are probably definitely not beginners, but if you are, just kind of trust the process and it might not look good initially, don't give up, just keep going, right? Especially, you know, I'm working uh, really quite abstract in the beginning. And then kind of semi-abstract and then into kind of impressionism ish and if i push it i can get into realism too andrew can you say something about the colors you're choosing right now obviously not local colors how are you deciding what to put down as a first layer uh well i'm no i'm definitely not using local color there are, I, I like to use real punchy pinks reds oranges yellows just like you see, because I like these colors seeping through. Uh, I'm thinking the value a little bit in the sense that, okay, well, if it's dark around here, maybe I can go with a, like a violet, right? Like this or something, right? Strong purpley kind of color, right? So those would be my darks. Even though, you know, obviously I can go darker than that, right? My sky is going to be you know, not super bright light, but light. Uh, so I did a pink, right? Uh, what are my lights? Well, these are my lights, right? So, you know, what's a light warm color? Or well, it'd be like yellow, maybe, right? So, which is punchy. So I'm kind of thinking about value a little bit, but uh, and you're right, not local color. initially and if you look at all the impressionist paintings out there like uh i don't know monanos those artists you know they use really punchy bright uh under under colors right and it's different i have different approaches for sure if i want more realism i'll have areas of black and white first and then put color on top but uh for these kind of paintings and just uh, uh, we'll go full out impressionism. And Marty's wondering why you choose the dark paper. Oh, I love the dark paper. Yeah, Marty, you know why you chose the dark paper? I, I, I can tell you why. I can tell you exactly what the way I started to use it. I used it years ago. I'm, I'm going back quite a ways, and I, I, I remember I was. We used to do pastels on, uh, you know, brown paper and traditional kind of uh, colors, I guess. And then I read a book, read one of the book, pastel book, the article or something, whatever it was, it was a while ago. When I saw these slides, and uh, pretty good. I was pretty impressed. Can't remember the name now, but uh, they said, uh, you know, never ever ever use black paper. <laughs> so. I, once I read that, I went out and bought every single type of black paper possible that I could find. I want to know why he said that. So, and this was before all these beautiful papers came out, right? Uh, so they, of course, they had pants on, and and anyway, I found one. It was a, a printmaking paper, a arches not arches cover. It was called cover something. Uh, it was like a printmaking paper, and it was black. I get why he said it, but I found this one paper. It's just about finding uh, your way of doing it, right? So I found a way of, uh, God, you know, if I punch in bright colors first and then put in my, because what happens with black paper, sometimes the colors can be dead looking, right? So I thought, well, this this works for me. So I kind of, and I like working the, the, I like the neutral dark. I don't know, something about it. Hopefully that answers your question. All right. Yes, thank you. And Andrew, Karen's wondering if you ever use a watercolor wash or an alcohol wash to start. Never. 
I mean, okay, I get why people do it because they want to get the dots and dogs in and stuff like that. Uh, but I like to control more my doxa. That's why I don't like do, going dark right away. And even when I paint with acrylic or oil, uh, some of you guys probably, I'm sure, paint as well. Uh, maybe not everyone, but some people. Uh, I like controlling where I put the docks and stuff like that. So <clears throat> if I do that, that takes that away. So I don't do it. I feel it takes it away. So this way I can control what I want. Okay, I might not want docks up here. Maybe I want it inside more here, whatever. I can control a little bit easier. I had that issue with painting too, because I think traditionally wise people, oh, you got to do darks first and then build up your lights. I, I struggle with that uh, for many years because I couldn't get my lights like really light enough. So. <laughs> And what was the going with that? Anyway, that's why. I don't. But yeah, definitely. Whatever whatever works for you. There's no right or wrong way. Uh, there's ways that, uh, you know, the guy said never use black, and you never would. Well, I, I use it all the time, and a lot of other artists use it as well. So... It's all good. Uh-oh. Andrew, if you can hear me, you've been accidentally muted. That better? Thank yes, thank you very much. Uh, do you do much plein air painting? I, I've done it. I don't do a lot because I, I draw from life and paint from life, uh, the figures. And uh, I think it's important. Uh, but definitely, you know, I think when I retire, maybe one day, I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to do. That's my goal. Right now, I, I, I probably uh, go to 10 to 12 figure drawing sessions per week. 10 to 12 sessions, three hour sessions. Uh, so I figure draw a lot. Uh, and it just, this is why I don't need a drawing. Uh, painting and drawing is really intermixed uh, quite a bit. It's a bit, what are you doing, the brighter? But I've done it before, for sure. I enjoyed it. I think it, I know he, he <laughs> You gotta, I think it's where I live too, because we get a lot of rain. I'm from Vancouver and up, up uh, north there a little bit from you guys. Well, quite a bit north. So it rains a lot. Hopefully that. Will be a time I'll get into this for sure. Takes me a while to get into it, but a half an hour. Kim is wondering what you think your darkest dark value would be. Ah, uh, well, darks are really dark up close. Number one, it's good for attraction. So definitely in here and the lower parts of these cars for sure, right? You can always push back. The old rule: color and lighter in the distance, warm and cool up close. Oh, sorry, the cool and lighter in the distance, warm and darker up close. So colors get darker when they get close to you, right? Closer. But, you know, you want to control where the eye looks. So this is my attraction. Uh, what I want you to look. 
And then, of course, I do want you to look, uh, continue that ultimately down the, uh, the side there. And funny enough, after this, I gotta, I gotta like drawing class after this session. I'm busy, busy drawing, painting, oh, quite a bit, really. That's good. It's not work. You gotta, I think you gotta have the attitude. It's just a lifestyle, right? That's where I tell my students the lifestyle. Do you like it? Well, you're doing all of that figure drawing so often. Karen's wondering, what do you do with all of your drawings if you're attending those so many sessions? I just uh, usually recycle them. Take a picture, recycle them. I keep some, but I mean, the, the, it's this, uh, you got to understand that the paper we use is newsprint paper and crap paper, which is really non archival, right? So you can't really, it's going to fade eventually. But student quality, because you do mass drawing, right? You do a lot of drawing there. Once in a while, I use a good surface for sure. You know. What are you using to draw? What material? I used, uh, oh man, I can say, I got some of my, I use everything. I use pastels, I use uh, charcoal pencils. Uh, I use uh, the generals ones. I use a, a premier uh, blue pencil, a dark blue pencil. Uh, do regular pencil too. We do a thing on white on black, I do for my students. That's uh, quite interesting that you like. <laughs> which is what you call the China market. This one. I, don't, I always tell people too, look, no one's gonna see a photo next to your painting, right? Well, see, if, if you go to a show at IAPS, you see all the paintings on the wall, do you see the photos next to your painting? No, right? Uh, could be an interesting show if you saw that. Actually, it'd be a good learning exercise, actually. Uh, but no one does, right? So no one's going to know, oh, you missed the blue car in the back, you know, or, or whatever. So no, no one knows at all. Saying that, did, <laughs> this happened to me once, a quick story. Uh, I was actually at a, when I was young. I was about 23, I think, 24. I did my first planar thing with a bunch of actually well known artists and locally here. Uh, and I were painted, we were painting in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, and I was painting the uh, vista with houses in the back. And there was a yellow house, and I, I, I didn't put it in my painting, and I just didn't like it. Uh, I left it out, you know, and I, anyway, this guy comes up to me. Uh, he says, oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's looking really good. I said, oh, thanks. He said, what about the yellow house over there? He goes, that's my house. I go, I go, look, I'm saving it till last because it's my favorite house. And he goes, oh, yeah. Anyway, I made the guy happy, even though I. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> So saying that, yeah, I could easily. Uh... Oh, 
You know, and the colors you can, you know, the colors don't have to be exact. As long as the value is close, that's more importantly than the color. Uh, again, and also if I'm using a printout, this change, this is not reality, right? It's from a photo. So a lot of times, obviously, if I have the my laptop open, but I'll also have my laptop open to the scene as well, because the colors are probably a little, oh, yeah, well, they are more accurate than than the printout. But uh the pinouts I use mainly for my, I like to use a pinout plus uh, my classes and stuff, right? We use pinouts and stuff, painting classes or workshops or whatever. It's easier, isn't it? <clears throat> There's a little bit of finicky going on this one actually as well, because you got an angle, right? I would pack a list in 20 minutes, that's for sure. But uh, an hour and a half, yeah, okay, I'll do it. Definitely. I just realized I'm a PSW uh, member, aren't I? <laughs> Let's forget. Okay, and if you ever have problems with color, choosing color, here's my little tip. So my students, it, and it actually rhymes. Uh, when in doubt, gray it out. Is always good. When in doubt, gray it out. Pick a gray. Make sure it's the right value and use it. Can't go wrong if it's the right value. Right. That's what I suggest. And knowing how to edit, so, you know, the biggest thing I think in oh, creative stuff is, uh, you know, editing is huge, right? Decision making, uh, what to leave out, what to put in, you know, what's your style? Are you realistic? Are you professionist? Like, what, what's, the, what's the deal? Uh, what, are you, what are you trying to say? So that's important, right? You got to kind of know what kind of painter you, you are, you know? Do you want to put these, all these holes and stuff in? Well, maybe. Greens are always tricky. Could have a good, good variety, warm, cool. Make some browns in there, it's always good too. Do you want to go all the way up, for example? Probably not. You know, if there's two of these, you want to, I don't know, there's all these things you can, you can do, make, decide on, right? Especially with street scenes, because they're, they're quite uh, complex. Right. <laughs> and the beauty about the under under strong under under colors too is uh yeah. is you know if you do put grays and stuff over top, they're not gonna look kind of ugly, you know, they look good. So it's okay. People who do a lot of black and white under under work, uh, they can make it look good too. But they, you know, they build up a lot, right? You got to kind of build up your 
uh, your colors to make them look good and the rest of it. And there's lots of artists I've seen do that too. And, you know, it's fair enough. Bum, 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 bum. And also my other tip that I really realized lately is that uh, people always want, I know this is a demo and I kind of continue working, right? Uh, if you're at home, take breaks, take short breaks. You don't have to uh, go 24 seven just because, you know, take a break because part of it is, is taking a break to see what you've done, to see what you, what you want to do next. Uh, you know, do you want to, Add a color here. You want to take out some detail, uh, stuff like that, right? So, so should we do? If you want to move a pole over, move it over. I mean, there's so many things you can move. Uh, detail or whatever. <clears throat> Green's good for lights, for window lights too, isn't it? Green in the windows is always good. Especially for that just before night, which is this really. Uh, you know. Andrew, Kim Lordier's in the house, and she's wondering if that's duct tape at the base of your easel. Ah, good observation. Kim, I'm glad you're looking at my duct tape. Yeah, duct tape. Right, that's just uh, easy cleanup for your pastel dust, right? Easy cleanup, mainly. I'm not, I'm not the... Uh, I was talking to Pam just before you guys, everybody gone on and basically, uh, uh, I'm not the most organized guy in the world, that's for sure. My pastels are kind of all over the shore here. I kind of like that though. It's part of the process, right? Because I, I'm kind of looking and it gives me time to think. So I look for a color I want, try it out, put it back if I don't like it. Uh, it's going to be nice like that now, eventually. Well, Kim thinks that's brilliant, and she's going to steal the idea from you. <laughs> ah, uh <-huh. laughs> and duct tape's easy to rip, too. Uh, you know, you just rip it. You don't have to cut it. It's pretty easy. It's easy. This is easy as masking tape, actually. And apparently you're not saving your pastel dust to make new pastels, right? No, are you kidding? I don't have time to make new pastels. But I, I know it's not that hard, I don't think, is it? I don't know. You guys have probably, some of you have done it maybe, but I don't know. <laughs> I just go and buy it. They're not cheap, though, are they? That's for sure. And I think part of my post is, is consistently underworking, right? Uh, that's what I like to do because I got room to make changes if I need to and the rest of it, right? See? <laughs> Everybody see that? Ouch. Yeah. That's about a few bucks down the tube. Yeah. Sometimes you get these crumbly ones, man. That's crazy. I also press quite hard. Uh, I'm a bit of a hard presser. I, I like it. I can, I'm kind of controlling it a little bit, actually. If I want to go lighter, I just go lighter. I want to go heavy, you go heavy. That's important. You feel? My 
I just need that guy and just fit, cut it back a bit in. And also, look, if you're doing a funding lights here in the car, this is a little tip for you. Your inside one are going to be lighter than the outside one. This is going to be lighter than this, right? Because I want you to go this way, view, viewers' interest, right? So I'll make this one lighter, more intense. If someone can maybe let me know when it's 12, that'd be great because then I can uh, have two minutes to take a look, see where I'm at. Okay, no problem. Look. That way I still got lots of time after. Don't want to make big changes. It's funny when I first went to IAPS to I didn't know anybody. <laughs> Actually, Desmond was one of the first guys I met. But uh, but the more you go, the more people you know. It's kind of fun now. I like it. Plus, it's good learning. And even if Kim knows this for sure, it doesn't matter what how much experience you have. Uh, it's always good to watch different people. Even if someone... I watch some people that are uh, some eyes that are really high realism because even though I'm not, it, it does. I do learn stuff, and it's always good. And if I want to go realistic, I can, right? In, in a certain area or something, that's why I like it. So many stories, so little time. I always talk about my story when I, well, I got a few a few stories, but the one about me making, making uh, uh, I was doing Devon once when I was young, 22, 23. And of course, at 22, 23, you think, I started off pretty young. You think everyone's old, <laughs> right? So uh, it's all relative, right? And so I was doing a demo. It was just a landscape, actually. Then there was a group of, I don't know, maybe 30, uh, you know, at the time, you know, older people uh, from what I was then, 20. So I think it was this, some lady just said, uh, I was working halfway like this kind of thing, mo mo moving along. She goes, what if you make a mistake? I said, I don't make mistakes. Boy, and if you get a 22-year-old saying that in front of a bunch of you know, older, older crowd, uh, boy, I, I silenced the room pretty darn quickly. And I tell you, everybody had their eyes on me. But I said, look, I'm always making mistakes. I don't know exactly how it's going to look when I put it on the paper. Come on. Like, have you have I done like a billion drawings? No one has, right? So you have an idea for sure. But uh, I just believe I don't like the word mistakes. It's make changes. If you don't like something, just make a change. Right, it's not a mistake. Right, maybe if you spill coffee on it or something. Uh, that's a, that's a mistake. Anyway, this is my mistake story. Give you guys. And if you got an angled car, these cars are actually on a slight angle, not a lot. Right, you make this outside light go this way on your painting and make the inside one go this way. Okay. And I think even if I don't, uh, 
Okay, I'll push this as far as I can, but even if I don't completely finish it, I will finish it for you and send the picture for sure. That'll be great. And I, and, and I also have the attitude in my head, I really don't care if it doesn't turn out. And honestly, that I've had that attitude all my, and you know why? Because it takes up the pressure. Oh, this is going to be like the best one ever. I'm like, really? Is it? But I want it to be, and I'll try. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, well, uh, I'll do my best. It doesn't turn out. That's okay. I'm not too concerned. On to the next one. We'll learn your lesson, lessons and move on. Oh, it's all about moving on. All, all, all of it. Keep going. Keep going. Need some color corner. Strong color around lights is always good, right? So you got good lights, uh, reds, oranges, like the one I just broke. Just little guys, nuggets. Uh, you know, around light, right? So you get the glow factor going on for sure. You know, if you want to cut back trees in it, just add some more, take them out, add some lines in, but not too many, stuff like that, right? It's, no one's gonna. It's an impression of the street, street scene. It's an impression. Do you want to change the colors of these banners? Do you want to put them in? Your, your call, your painting. Mm. Right. Okay. Get this area covered real quick here on the side. Uh, I got some paintings to show you guys too, if you want. So paint back the after this maybe a little bit. Yeah, that would be great. If you had one. Lights break up towards you, so they break up down here, which you're going to get to. Okay. Karen wonders if you're saving the foreground for last. Yeah, I'm working my way down, basically. Usually upright, I work down, uh, top down. Uh, sometimes if I work flat, <clears throat> I might do differently, for sure. But uh, up, I could work both. The reason I do flat sometimes is if I want to go more realistic, I can. It's just easier. I don't know what it is about it, but I'm closer to it. Uh, if you want to, that's why it took to go by. Uh, what was I saying? What was I saying? If you want to be looser, do it upright like this. Pull back, easy to pull back and take a look. Stuff like that, right? So. Andrew Kim has another great question. She says, uh, "How much she's limited to three? 
<laughs> I'm going to tell her to unmute. <laughs> um, she says in some of your finished works, it looks like you're using some kind of scraping tool to add texture and line to the piece. And would you mind sharing what your unusual tools are? And by the way, that's only her second question. Ah, okay. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm not there yet, Kim. Well, oh, yes, I do. I'm going to show you. Am I a little tricky? I did pull out most of it, though, before I do that. Yeah, I got a little, 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 little tool I use. A little tip, I think. Well, I like, I like using it. Okay, let's go down here. Let's gonna come down here. I can do this really quick, so it's not an issue. As long as I get the main. I got a ways to go, but I'll be okay. This way, if I do the tool thing later, you'll have to stick around. Uh, see? And you know, I don't like that pink, but it doesn't suit it. Get rid of it. I can always add it again. One minute, but push that back a little bit. Bit of light green now. Hmm. Let this guy back in. You know, even at this stage, I mean, it's starting to look like something, but it's kind of now I'm kind of. Abstract to semi-abstract kind of way of expression, I guess. But, you know, I've seen some good loose impressionistic painting. I've seen some good realistic paintings. It's uh, not better than each other. And Andrew, have you... Um done or do you ever do non-representational abstract work? No. I don't know, mainly because I, I'm kind of doing abstract or in my, my work initially. So I, I get, I, that's my fix, I guess, when I do like these big broad shapes, color and all the rest of it, right? That's kind of like my abstract stuff out of my system. And then I, uh, what I like is I'm kind of turning <clears throat> turning it into uh, something a little you know extra, a little more, a little uh, a representation of uh, street or whatever I'm doing landscape or whatever. But uh, kind of like that McDonald's sign back there. <laughs> Want to get this site done by twelve. I'm glad I got at least till twelve thirty or possibly longer. So that's good. I know watching demos can be kind of like uh, watching paint dry, right? But it's it's the old thing where uh, you know I'm 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 not going super fast, but I'm not going slow either, really. Sometimes I go slow if I'm feeling lazy. But if I want a little bit more sophistication in my color choices, I go a little slower than I'm doing now. Here I'm kind of like, uh, okay, this is close enough, grab it. <laughs> Maybe I want to look around a little bit more if I'm doing something. Uh, you 
you know, that, I, that I'm starting to like, maybe if I want it more realistic or something. That's terrible, that one. That's not working. Yeah. Let's get this side cover. I'm I'm paying a lot on this side mainly because this is my focus anyway. Also, uh, I'm kind of on an angle here because of the because uh, I had to position the camera there, uh, so you guys can see a little because I'm a lefty as well, right? So I, I'm struggling to get over that. It's, it's a little bit harder, but it's okay. I'm kind of my face is behind the camera because I'm doing this. Part of the part of the deal. Good thing about Zoom, you can look in from anywhere. It's one good thing. Some shapes on these cars here. Hot edge on top is always good, right? Hot edge on top of cars is good. Hot object, hot edge. Even if it were any day of blurry lights and stuff, which I've got here, you know, you can't, you see less on a rainy day, especially because it's blurry, you, you, I don't know, rainy, all the rest of it. All right, so. Shut that in a bit more, so I'm gonna let this go a little bit. Cars can be a little tricky for the shape, right? And you don't don't need to put in, uh, you know, for example, uh, you know, big wheels and stuff like that. I mean, Also weird too when you go when you're doing Zoom, I find a lot of if it's silent <laughs> on the other end, it's like, is everybody there still? I'm sure you are. Yeah, we're all here. Um and then it's like you're talking to yourself, right? It's weird. Yeah. Just want to let people know if you do want to ask a question directly, feel free to unmute yourself, ask the question, and then just mute yourself again to listen to the response. And that way we don't have a lot of echoing, but um, maybe Andrew would like to hear another voice besides mine for a change. <laughs> hey, you guys speak up. That's okay. I'm, I'm good with talking. If not, that's okay, too. I'm just moving along here. Carol says, we're here, we're mesmerized. And ah. Karen is asking if um, at some point we can see a scan of your pastels. Uh-oh. Yeah, let's, how about we do that? <laughs> yeah, I got messy. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to take a two, uh, tw five minutes. Uh, obviously, I'm not finished, but I, I just want to have a quick two-minute look and check, and I'll show you my pastels. Then I've got, you know, a good session after it too to make finish it all and stuff. You're not going to be impressed by my setup. <laughs> That's all I have to tell you. Actually saying that, it's usually better than the way it is now. It's just because I, I went to ICANN, the pastel conference there, and I got back here on the weekend. So I'm, I just kind of laid it all out. And then I started working right away, painting right away, whatever. So... Mm -hmm. 
part of it. Harley's commenting that it's really amazing to see the cars take shape and um, how you're, you're you then you you do a little blurry stroke and it it looks like their movement has been added. Just wait. What's that in my texture thing? You'll, you'll see a lot of movement. More, more than this. It'll come. It's coming. It's coming. You know, people get this wrong too all the time. When they, uh, it drives me crazy when you do street scenes. If you look on the photo, the photo's up here, right? Because there is a hill here. I know this area really well. Uh, it's close to my house. Uh, there's a little hill here. Now, look, like it, like I said, it, it, if you don't want to put it in, don't put it in. Like, just lower the horizon line, right? There's nothing on this side that shows where the horizon line is, so you're okay. You know, this angle is important. Uh, you know, it's not as steep as you think, right? It's relatively straight here. So perspective is definitely uh, important for, for drawing. Mm -hmm. I'll put a bit of spawn color in here. That blue. Green back here. I'm going to put some light back here too. Definitely. Give the illusion of these cars going back in the back. For sure. <clears throat> I might play with a couple of lights coming down now too, actually. Get to it. And change the color temperature of the lights too. Make some warm, make some cool in the street cars is really helpful. I'm not always uh, all uh, you know, maybe some cool ones back here. It's a nice cool one. So we've got a comment and a couple questions here. Jean is saying first, wow, we were not expecting that dark pink, but love it. And um, Laura's asking, how do you make such a large print of your photo? Uh, I just go to the photocopy place and just say, this is just 11 by 17 and they do a pretty good job. Do you typically make your print to be the same size as as your painting's going to be then or uh, not all the time no if because if i'm doing a big one uh -huh. I, I mean i put prints i guess and tape them together but usually not but if i'm doing one the similar size anyway then why not right because it's and i also have a technique of a joint do you want me to show you real quick mm -hmm. please it's 12 o'clock i still got a long way to go i want to show you the technique too i want to show you what i I, I teach this to my students. If you want to, if you want to do something the same size, and if you, I don't draw. You saw me start. I don't draw, right? If you, if you want to draw with placement, you just put it over the painting, like that. Say if you want the edge of this car, keep your pencil there, lift it off, put your mark there, right? Mm -hmm. Now you can be, right? Top of that, keep it there. Top of that, right? For placement. Top this. This is before you get pastel on there. And then you connect the dots. 
if you want it super accurate. Now, look, well, with perspective and an impression of a scene, you don't have to be super accurate, but you don't want it too off as well. You got to be fairly close. There's still still rules I got to think about here for sure, right? Well, that is very simple and brilliant. It's simple, right? It's it's so. I found out all these little tips and tricks from teaching a, a teen class on the weekends. <laughs> they because they were they were hilarious. Number one, uh, and they they if I teach them little tricks and stuff, they love it. Like, oh yeah, I get excited. I love it. Now Theodore says he feels like he's watching a magician. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but once you know that the tricks of the magician, you realize it's it's not. Uh, Oh, you're like, oh, no, nah, now I get it. <laughs> it's just how you put stuff together, really. It really is. And if you need to use a simple color like that, a gray or whatever. I do usually have a good chunk of grays and stuff on me. Okay, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Um, Tools coming, the tools coming. I just want to lay in a little bit more down here. Uh, to the tool, I do like 89% in the paint, painting, and then I, I tweak over it as well. So that's why I'm not kind of doing it quite yet. I've got a little bit of time here. I want to get this more stuff down here. Maybe some more blocks. Yeah, for sure. So Kim is asking her third and final question. <laughs> oh. Just kidding, Kim. <laughs> and I'm not even sure. It says, did you learn site size originally? I'm not sure what that means. Yep. Yeah, I did. Yeah, what Kim. That's just mainly, mainly they use it for like uh, figure drawing and stuff, for site size measuring for fig long pose drawing, stuff like that, right? It's where you see people all with the pencil, the, the pencil and uh, cool, oh. uh uh, sewing needles better because it's longer. Yeah, slicing, yeah, helps too, right? So you can go like this on your sheet. Oh, is that the same? Right? Is that the same? Is that the same width? So you can do it that way too, for sure. Yeah, I learned that way, Kim, for sure. That's uh learned that in college way back when, I guess. And Karen Horn's wondering, are your headlight whites put that you put over the yellow cool or warm? Or both. I mix it up. Some, some I, I, I'd make cool, and some I'd, I, I really mix my light. If you look at more of a polished scene, I kind of mostly warm, mostly warm. But then, you know, these these are warm, really. You know, you can add a nice uh, light over top if you really want to zing them up. Let's go like that, right? That's like a killer zing that I just did. I'll do a close up of that guy. Okay, I gotta lay in this quick and then we'll get the texturing down. I have to use this hand because I get get the side heat. So I'll have to get the side out of here. And I honestly I'd probably if I was to do this for a final like a good piece. This is important. I wouldn't put this in. I might crop it too. I might I might make this a long one. So it's like uh I'll show you. You know, it doesn't always do this for demo, but I'd probably I might even think about doing something like that. Uh cropping it maybe. So it'll, I'm just doing this to show you uh, the process of lights and, and texture, but uh, definitely. I might process a little, a little bit at least. I have a few techniques, but this is my main one. Oops, too dark. Yeah, I know. Kim says this looks like music. Looks like what? Sorry, I missed it. Music. Yeah, Kim knows the deal. <laughs> I 
knows it's about. Yeah, you know, if you've painted a long time, you, you kind of know it's just like, a, uh, yeah, it's creative, right? It's good to know all the notes, but ultimately you want to sing a song, I guess, right? I'm glad I can draw on paint because I can't sing. So this is my little outlet. Ooh, look at this I want to do the times it now. I'm gonna make sure I do the uh, quarter after fall and do my texturing thing, I think. And then I can go back in if I have time for extra stuff. Get some green down now. I'm pretty happy I did my, I got one on the works right now. I'm pretty excited about, I don't know why, but I like it. I don't usually get that excited. I need a bolt, a big bolt. It's gonna, I'm gonna hopefully enter it for you guys for the our show, the 99 show. Awesome. Get in. But I like it. And ultimately, guys, if you don't get in a show, don't stress about it, okay? Not eat. I have shows. They're, they're really difficult to get in. And the, the cow was, like, huge. I got to, like, I'm sure Kim said the same thing, man. We got to, you know, if you're experienced, we still got to step up our game. to get Because the all everybody's stepping up the game. <laughs> For those shows, so they're obviously going to put in the best work they've got, right? So you got to put in your best, and if it doesn't get in, uh, it's a tough show. That's why it's it's tough to get in. Just keep trying. Don't give up. I don't believe in giving up. I, I I've not got in a lot of shows. Listen, and I won awards, so it, it just what does that mean? Don't don't worry about it. Long past worrying about it. Mm -hmm. You know, you fade off the distance, but you still want to get it way in there too. Mm -hmm. And I always usually uh, exaggerate my lights. Let's get that. Finish this off quick, and I'm going to do the uh, tool thing, I think. <clears throat> I hope you guys can stick around at least a quarter to. Uh, that's my goal. Uh, well, we've got a really great crowd today. We're past an hour and nobody has dropped out so far so wait for the tool. i'd say wait for the tool please that's, wait for the tool. that's a lot <laughs> and, and, and then wait for the my tool thing and i do pretty soon so i finish this and then at least see that because it's 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 a pretty cool thing and then uh mitzi's wondering about that really beautiful hot pink um uh, do you know do you know what brand is giving you that great hot pink or magenta? Yeah, I can tell you. Box right here. Let's see uh, hot. Oh yeah. Yep. Hot series. Little mini hot series. Oh, I love hot colors. So I got that. As soon as I saw that, I'm like, yeah, I want it. That's mine. No holding back there. I got that. But the just different brands you can get. As well for sure, but uh, what what brand was that? That was Diane Townsend Townsend, and that's the first time I've tried them. I bought the, those sets. Uh, I like them; they're good. Diane Townsend Townsend. 
Yeah, why not? I'd probably put that in there if I was to do my own finished piece for sure. Oh, I wanted to show you my pastels too, didn't I? Maybe I'll show you after because I get I can move the uh, laptop down on my laptop. Let's go for. Uh... Harley observes that you're doing more blending and layering with the yeah. pastels than he's seen before. And he says it really works with the rainy cityscape. Mm -hmm. Well, you've not seen me use my finger, have you? Right? So uh, I'm just kind of optically uh, blending, right? So basically I use that. And even this subtle shift, I might break that. Uh, instead of using all pink all the way, I darken it, use a bit of red there. Right, and uh, because even if you use the same color over top, let's block this one. I gotta get my two left in here. You can, uh, even if you use grays over top or whatever, it will still look uh, uh good, right? Dark in this foreground a little bit, doing that. Fix some good stuff, oh. nice enough. Andrew, do you have a whole set of grays that you yeah. use or just a variety? Variety, because I can never get, some sets are like too warm for me and then others are really cool, but I like a mix. So I just buy different brands of grays, whatever I can get, honestly. Karen wants to know if you've tried pan pastels. Yes, I'm a bit of an experimentist. I've tried a lot of different things. Yeah, I don't mind the pan pastels. They're pretty good. I got some somewhere kicking around. I just don't have right now. I got the grayscale pan pastels. I haven't actually tried the color ones. I, I bought the grayscale. What am I looking for here? This color, maybe. Kim's asking in the group if anybody knows if there's a true set of grays based on the value scale. Hmm. Based on based on the value scale. Uh, I don't I'm not sure what Kim means by that because we're all in values. Maybe she can talk. Uh, the Blue Earth has, this, I think, is a scale. Uh, Mungu has a scale that's decent, uh, but they're not full ranges, right? Like so, so, so for example, I think I know what came to. So meaning, there's some whites that are whiter, maybe than other brand brands. Some blacks that are blacker than other brands. So, uh, therefore, it's not a full range, is it? But the the pretty good uh, for the most part if you get a decent brand. That's why I get, this is why, hey, look, this is why I get different uh, brands. I'm going to light a gray here. I'm struggling. Here it is. Here it is. Better. Okay, almost ready for the tool. Blocking this in quick. You know, if you have a few heavier brush marks at the bottom, I 
almost blocked it in. That's good. I know for these things, don't go too light. Get a little, not that light, I mean. Little light. It's just a leading thing. Okay, almost full time. Oh. That, you know, it's funny, demos, I don't know if you guys demo a lot, but it's always harder work than it yourself. I think it's because, uh, I don't know. I think because you talk as well. But the, the still fun. Okay. And honestly, if I'm a home, I'll take way more breaks and I'll, I'll tweak it more. Right, so this this would take maybe a full day instead of a couple of hours, kind of thing, right? And it's not about maybe my speed necessarily. It's just about I'll take more breaks, right? Because I make you know more. It's good to be creative for sure. It's also good to uh, think a little bit and say, okay, well, what color do I need here? Stuff like that, especially if you're into realism or stuff like that. Maybe or even impressions doesn't matter. You still got to think of color and what's happening with the lights and stuff like that. Okay, I think it's almost time for the tools. 1217. And then I'll tweak it over top, do some tweaking. Okay, so my tool. This little guy, it's a rubber tool. It's got three different sides. There's a blue one, there's a red one. This is fine, this is medium, this is coarse. I started off using the comb for the, if you're, I don't know if you're, hopefully you guys can see this pretty good, but. Uh, I'm gonna are those, are those de cake decorating tools? I know uh, Laura Pollock was using cake decorating tools like that. I've, tr I've tried them, but I find them too hard. These, are, this is actually, this is a modeling tool. Okay. The modeling clay, and it's just the right, it's not too stiff, it's not too hard. Uh, get my own in this guy. I'll show you what it looks like when, and also if you go drip, drip it down this way, it gives you the illusion of uh, rainy day scenes a lot too, right? Streakiness a little bit this way. We also want to go this way for the uh, strong reflections as well. Like that way, that way. Well, we messed it up too. And uh, where, where can we get that kind of a tool? I get mine in the arts in Vancouver if you want to come out to Vancouver and get one. <laughs> at an art store or at a I got mine at an art store and in they have they had a little clay modeling section it was by the clay modeling okay. and they were, you can get them online too they're about eight bucks nine bucks set well seven to nine dollars under ten bucks right you shouldn't pay more than that good i got mine nine canadian right so that's about a buck american no, i'm just kidding it's like five six bucks i think us right so well they're, they're handy if you see it close, let me see if I can sign on this one. It's close to so you can kind of see the texture a little bit. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you see the minor in the, the oh, distance. Yeah. That's great. I'll bring it close. You can see what's going on a little bit. Right. And then what I do is I I, I I don't finish do this at the end because if I do if it's too much, I just put color over it, stuff like that, uh, could change it, right? So if I want it lighter in here, for example, I want some lights. Sometimes over the light, I don't want it too much in, in that light, right? Kind of thing. Sure. 
Uh, and also, what, what another good tip you guys could do if you want to know. I've done the little trick for lights, shiny lights. Uh, say, for example, this light. Maybe I'll we'll just add a bit more on the color. So it works. You got to make sure you have. You can use a, a a paper stick for this or those wrap sticks, smudger sticks, or whatever they call, or your finger. Just make sure your finger's clean. And then put your finger in the middle of it and then press up. So, and then I should really wash my hand, but hopefully it'll work. In the middle of this, go up hmm. and, and clean your finger. And then the middle of it, if you want, go down. Because if you don't do it that way, you'll get darks going in the lights and you'll mess it up. And it gives it like a, well, look at that one light. But it gives it kind of a blurred effect, but right? which I want. That's amazing. Because it is a wet day, right? It's a wet kind of look that you want. And I get and now, now I can tweak it, right? So these lights, I'd break up a little bit more. Even You can even bring lights closer than they actually are on the photo, and you can get away with it. Like if you subtly bring in this light, maybe a bit more in here, and just darken it and break it up more. That's all you need to do. So it's going to be lighter down here, maybe a little straight in the beginning, and then break it up as it comes towards you a little bit. I'd like some nice light lines in there too. What if I got my, you know, what's funny? My time's running out and this is now I'm into it now. <laughs> uh, I'm like getting into it now. So it takes a while to get into painting. I kept on my weight. And so. Um, Kim's wondering if there's a specific number for the softness of the tool. I don't know. When I looked online, I had to put in clay modeling comb. Otherwise, it just gave me sticks to look at. And then the combs do come in a variety of firmness or softness. If you go, if you Google triangle, ah, well, the triangle. And there's some little holes in here. It looks a little uh, some detail. I found one on Amazon that's under um, clay modeling uh, scraper. Okay, how much is it? It's a well, it's eleven dollars for six pieces, and there's there's they're all different sizes, but one of them is the triangle. It's not quite like yours. Oh, uh, some are hard. You got to be careful. Some are like plastic. They're too hard. I've tried. I tried one. It's too hard. These are like look how it bends. Yeah, this one. This one looks too hard. Yeah, they were like well, we're so. Getting that white one. Cake, cake smoothers, they're called too. But oh. those are, those are going to be uh, hard. Yeah, that, that might be hard, right? Cake smoothers. Yeah, these are made for clay modeling and all that. Well, if we can't find it, then no one can annotate you. <laughs> well, that's a little thing, right? Steal like an artist. <laughs> does, anybody, does anybody oil paint what with water soluble oils? Uh, I found a way to make to, to make water soluble oils dry in two minutes. Go Just, on. Yeah, I found a way. Crazy. How? Oh, oh, you want to know? Yeah. Ah, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> That's part two. <laughs> it's like a trailer. I can't tell you there. You don't want to know the old soap. It's like a soap opera, right? You want to end on an exciting note and then, oh, what's the next episode coming? Right? <laughs> if you want to know, you can just email me. I'll, I'll, I'll... I, I might post it on Instagram soon, actually. If you guys want to add me on Instagram, you're welcome to Andrew McDermott Art. I'm going to post it up there pretty soon, uh, that technique, actually. I might do a little short mini demo of it. 
Okay, I think it's time to maybe show you some work. I don't want to untape this because it's almost 12 30. Oh my God. It goes by quick, I tell you. Okay, let's untape this so it looks like here. And then at the end, don't forget to show us kind of a head on view sure. of that one. Sure. It looks, no. looks I'll gorgeous. Show, I'll show you a couple of finished ones too. But you'll get the idea of what I, how I did by the spot. This is the best part taking out the tape. It's like Christmas. Ah. Hang on. Hang on, guys. Hang on. Ah, what's that then? Need my knife here. Got caught. Okay, almost there. Wait, I'll see. That's a straight on view. Best I can, at least. Is that good for the straight on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. So that's how I, I, I mean, I'll show you, I'll show you a couple for you guys yet. This is way this thing not long ago. And you can see the texture going on there. Right, it's a little bit, a tiny bit more polished. And I cut more, I can show you two real quick. There's one here, texture two, look at the texture. Right. Right. Color, color. And this is one I did, I'm pretty happy with this one actually, this one I did recently. And if you look, it's got the uh, subtle texture on this one, not as much. If you look there in certain areas, I got texture going on. Right. Then, oh, this one is a while back, but it's, I got, this is when I started using the texture. That's framed and stuff. What paper did you say you are using? I'm using uh, UART Dark for this one. And this is a little acrylic that uh, I did. See, it's, it's seamless look right because i'm a colorist so it, it's a similar thing going on there all right i think i found them combs on fire mountain gems fire mountain gems so i might use the you know I, guys I'll, I'll finish this for you guys and send it for you uh I'll polish it up a little bit but that's you know hopefully that's enough to show you my process and talking about reflections and lights right i'm going to make it a little bit more polished for you guys uh but it you know it's this is the same just a tiny bit more polished right than that that's all it's getting there right so it just takes a bit more time all right sometimes they go loose looser or whatever or tighter uh yeah that's about it is there any you guys got questions you guys can open up the uh any final questions out there lots of appreciation that's for sure andrew it was really beautiful to watch Where do you find you on instagram what was that about instagram sorry yeah, what's your Instagram? Uh, I think if you just Google my name, Andrew McDermott Art. 
Andrew McDermott Art. And I should pop up, uh, the, I should be the first person to pop up. And show us your pastels. Oh. <laughs> they should be, all oh, right. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take this off now. Second, second. Oh, yeah, it's a mess. Look at uh, this is pretty disorganized mess. But that's I. That's it's usually a little bit better. I gotta tell you, I got some back there and everything underneath. Uh, underneath my laptop there, I use that space. So, yeah, pretty messy, right? <laughs> so anyway, that's that's it. And the, the, there's different bands mixed, uh, and usually uh, they're a little tidier than this. This is pretty chaotic. I I definitely clean these will take like an hour to clean right so wipe them off put them back. Uh, usually after every one or two pieces I'll, I'll put them back kind of thing. Uh, even every piece really, you know. But anyway. So is it, Andrew, one question that just came up is whether you started painting in oils or with pastels. Well, I started when I was in college, right? So I can't remember exactly because in college you do kind of do everything, right? Uh, mm. But uh, I think I think I think pastels actually. Yeah, when I took it a bit serious, I started doing pastels. Uh, just because I had a box at home from from college, so I kind of messed around and uh, and I struggle with oils for the longest time because I was more of an immediate painter. That means I don't like mixing my colors and because I don't like the drying time in oils. I hated it. I was too impatient for it. These, I can just put it down. It's down. I think that's probably a big part of why I like pastels. Uh, and <laughs> with oils, I struggle with drying time. So my, my light, I couldn't build up my lights good enough. Now, when I, I did switch to acrylic, I found it easier because the drying time it was fast. Uh, and I've, now I found a way to make water soil with oil dry as fast as an acrylic, uh, um, which is great because you get the best of both worlds. So I'm like really loving them right now. But definitely love pastels are, you know, my kind of, uh, I like going back and forth, but I do like past love pastels, of course. You know, they're, they're, real, they're beautiful media. Nice and soft, good colors, good for plain oil painting, good for figure drawing as well, uh, indoors and stuff. All right. Well, and that this has been fascinating, fabulous, beautiful, wonderful to watch. And thank you for patiently answering everyone's questions and yeah. um, look forward to seeing, you know, if you do any more tweaking the finished product, I'll post it on our Facebook page. And um, the video will be available probably by tomorrow if anybody wants to go back and review anything. So thank you so, so much, Andrew. It was really wonderful. Thanks for having me, guys. And, uh, you know, <laughs> keep at it. Keep <laughs> thank at you. It. That's terrific. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from Oregon. Fantastic. Fantastic. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.